Hello, I am Chennabhan Kapoor. I am going to discuss my solution to the lead code problem, uh, Champagne Tar. It's today's problem in the October lead coding challenge. So the problem definition is as follows. We have uh, a tower of champagne glasses in the form of a pyramid uh, as shown here in the example here. So we have at, at row zero, let's call the first row as row zero, which is zero best way of you know, indexing. So row zero has one glass and uh, row one has two glasses and row two has you know uh, three glasses. Actually, if you want to even index the glasses, this is glass zero, glass one, and then glass two, right? This is how we normally index uh, those positions. So initially say all of them are empty <clears throat> and all of them has the same capacity, which, which can hold like 250 ml of you know, champagne. And uh, suppose we pour first 250 ml of champagne into the top glass, right? It's gonna fill, right? And uh, so when we when we pour the second uh, glass, what happens is we're gonna have uh, one filled here at the top, but it is gonna spill over and it's gonna spill over to equally on, on, on either side, right? So in this case, we're gonna have off here and then off here, right? So this is after uh, two, two glasses of you know champagne poured into into the top so when we pour the third one so what happens is we are going to have uh, again spillover and uh, so this is going to fill and this is going to fill this is after third glass so when we pour the fourth one what happens is so we are going to have one fourth here one fourth here uh, but uh, it's going to be two fourth or actually one one half in the middle because it's going to take from either side actually the picture here shows what happens after you know you pour four glasses of champagne right so one fourth from here and one fourth from here that's how we're going to have uh, uh, off of the glass filled in in the middle right but on the either side it's only one quarter so this is after four glasses of you know champagne let's work on few more cases say after fifth uh, after fifth glass what we're going to have is uh, so uh, so again one fourth is going to be added to the left side here and one fourth here and, and two fourth here so effectively it's going to be, uh, so these two things are going to be off and off, or maybe uh, I, I want to write it as two fourth, uh, two fourth here, and then this is full, which is going to be one. This is after fifth glass. Uh, and after sixth glass, uh, again, these two things are going to fill and they become, you know, three by four, right? This is how it, it becomes three by four here and three by four here. This is already full. So it is going to spill over whatever it gets, which is actually off, right, or two fourth. So that's how we are going to have, you know, one fourth here and then one fourth here, right? So this is after six glasses are poured into this, all right? So uh, we, we understood this way. Now let's see how to solve a problem of this nature, right? So uh, what, what we are going to do is we can actually simulate it, but simulating by pouring one glass each is going to be too, too time consuming. I don't think we are, that will be acceptable as a as a solution here because of you know time limit. So let's let's see what if I pour six glasses at once uh, at the top, right? Uh, that's not happening. Uh, that's not happening in, in this way. But let's see if that happens uh, in this way. So then what happens is we are going to have six glasses at the top. So now I'm going to use like a pyramid structure. Uh, but instead of writing in a pyramid shape, I'm going to write it in an L shape. But I I hope you understand here. Essentially this is going to pour into this and this right and uh, so we are going to have three here and and you, you understand how how it's going to be poured right so this is going to pour this into this and this is going to pour this into this and uh, the next one is going to have four of them uh, so this is how it's going to look like right initially all the glasses has zero uh, ml or zero capacity or zero uh, uh, amount of you know champagne so when we pour six uh, glasses worth of champagne into the top, so we are gonna have six here, right? Uh, but yeah, it can't hold six. So what happens is it, it is gonna hold only one and then it's gonna spill uh, five glasses worth, right? And those five glasses worth are split into uh, off and off on either side. So this it's going to be like something like this, say 2.5 and 2.5 on either side. So at 2.5, probably I want to write it as uh, more like, you know, five by two, five by two, right? So let's say five by two, five by two here, but that is still more than one. So it is, they are going to keep just, you know, one uh, glass worth each and they are going to spill uh, the remaining one and a half uh, you know, glass worth, right? So that one and a half glass worth is going to be split into 0 0.75, 0 0.75 here. 
So 0.75 here and 0.75 goes to this place. But look at this, when the other one also spills 0.75 into this one, this becomes 1.5, right? So because it is added, but this is still some 0.75 because only one spillover is coming to this place. Now, if you look at here in, in, the, in this level, the glass here, which is maybe in the index as uh, two comma zero, right? So this is uh, row zero and row one and row two and row three, right? So row two columns, this is column zero, column one or glass, you can call it as glass zero, glass one, glass two, glass three. So uh, uh, row two glass zero does not spill over because it does not have you know more than one glass worth of uh, champagne in that, right? So that is not gonna spill anything. Similarly, uh, two comma two also. But what about two comma one? That's gonna spill off of it, right? So that off is going to be spilled into here, which is, uh, so the, yeah, the off of that is gonna split into uh, uh, 0.25 and 0.25 here and here, right? So now suppose if you, you, this is what happened after six, uh, after this one, obviously be, these are lesser than or equal to one, so they don't spill over and the whole process stops. So this should be a little fast in, in computing. And if, if you if they ask for any, and these are whatever the empty things are all zeros. So if they ask for what happens after you know pouring six glasses of champagne at the three comma say two. So three comma two is essentially this one, right? So which should be 0.25. And two comma two should be 0.75. And maybe if they ask for two comma one, it is not 1.5 because uh, what it is holding is never more than one. So the answer should be just one. Right, because we whatever that point five we took it out. I just didn't show here. Right, so this is the idea I'm going to use. So if you already see here, I'm already kind of you know writing it, it like a type table, and we can fill in this order. Right, so let's see how to solve this problem um, in the code. So what they're asking here is uh, these are the three parameters they give in this function. Um, so first one is going to be uh, poured amount of uh, you know the number of glasses worth of champagne is, is poured here. And this is query row and query glass essentially is row index and column index, right? At that point, what happens, right? In the example I showed there, so I'm exactly just you know coding in the same way. So at the top uh, uh, glass, which is zero comma zero, I filled uh, all the uh, amount of and the, the whole of this you know poured amount of uh, uh, champagne into that. Obviously, it cannot hold. So now I, I go over each of these things by row by row. And when I'm processing a row, uh, obviously it, whatever this spillover is gonna go to the next row, which is row plus one, right? And uh, so it goes to uh, the same column and column plus one, because those are the two glasses, which are you know on the left and right side of it. And equally it's gonna go. So I go over each of them. Uh, so I go over till this row minus uh, one, because uh, after processing row minus one, whatever we were supposed to have in, in that row index, we are going to have it, right? So we don't want to spill from there, even if it is more. So that's why I'm going to stop at that point. And column, I'll go as much as row because it's more like a pyramid, right? So uh, if you look at this as a matrix, we, we don't go beyond the principal diagonal. So when I come down here, if that place has more than one uh, quantity, then only it's going to spill. Otherwise, it's not going to spill, so I don't have to worry. So if it is more than one, I'll see how much it is going to spill. So this amount is whatever the amount we had in that minus one because one is going to remain in that glass and rest of them is going to spill. So that spill by two is what is going to go to each side and that's what I'm doing here. So this is as simple as that. If you do it for until that, you know, row minus one. So row is also updated because we always get row plus one here. So finally, the answer is going to be at tower of, you know, uh, the input parameters, uh, row and uh, query row and gla query glass, which is row and column index. But if this is greater than one, the answer is just one because yeah, it, it's gonna hold only one. If it is lesser than or equal to one, then whatever the quantity it says is the answer, right? So this is exactly what we needed. Let me uh, see whether it works for the example we, we saw. Uh, so it works for the sample test case, which is too trivial. Uh, but let's see what if we pour six glasses worth and we were trying to see what happens at you know, 4 comma 2, right? So in that case, uh, yeah, it's going to it's going to have zero. So it's not, I think, 4 comma 2. I think we were looking for 3 comma 2, right? So 3 comma 2 is going to be 1 fourth. That's what the example. It was fourth row, but yeah, it is zero-based index. So it is 3 comma 2, uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.25.
right? So I think it should work. So I'm going to just submit and uh, see it is accepted. All right. So uh, it should work really fast. Um, if you look at the time complexity here uh, and the space complexity also, we have basically uh, a, a matrix worth of, you know, whatever the row index they've given that row, if it is R, it is going to be R cross R, like, you know, R squared amount of space. And time-wise also, we go for each row and then within that, so both of them are linear, so it's going to take a uh, uh, big of R square time, right? That's the complexity here. But we, if you see the constraints uh, here, query class column will never be more than row because it's like a, it is only lower triangle uh, uh, and then principal diagonal of the matrix we're dealing with. So this will never go beyond. So we don't need a, any columns beyond that also. So this uh, row, query row can be replaced with query glass. Uh, that way we can actually reduce some space and also time also. We don't have to compute any values beyond that. I'm going to add one more here just to avoid because when we compute for that particular column, it is going to spill to the next column also. Instead of handling that condition here, I'm going to just make one extra. That That is going to be wasted. So instead of row here, I should not go to uh, the whole, uh, all the columns up to that. I can stop at some point. So I'm going to use some other min value. So it's like, you know, say max column is going to be, it is min of uh, row and uh, the query glass because we don't want to go beyond that, right? We want to stop at that place. So instead of row here, I'm going to do that. So this should work a little faster than, um, you know, uh, just going over the whole uh, row. We can stop here, right? So uh, obviously my answer is still here. So that should not be a problem, all right? Let's see whether it works for the test case we have seen. It worked here and if you submit, I think it's going to accept also. Accept it. And uh, if you see the time complexity, it might change a little bit, but I think lead code may not have test cases which are going to justify this improvement. But what we have improved is our space complexity uh, and, and time complexity. Both of them are reduced to uh, something like this. So big O of say RC. What is RC? R is the number of rows and C is the column index. And C is never greater than uh, R. So that's the good point. So uh, our good thing, because if C is even equal to R, we are not going to go beyond that, right? So space-wise also, that is also reduced from R square to big O of RC in terms of space, right? And if you observe, you, I don't think you, uh, you, you, can, you cannot notice the similarity with the Pascal's triangle and binomial coefficient. So it is in the similar way, and if you see that, a pyramid uh, 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 it, it forms it is symmetric across that you know center line uh, vertical line so if you have a c which is greater than r by 2 you can always take you know the the counterpart of that right so whenever we have c uh, if c is greater than that what we can set do is we can take min of uh, c and uh, r minus c right so that's that's what we can do that so uh, the number of columns is never more than r by 2 is one something you can you can always make sure Right. So these are some optimizations you can do. I think this is very similar to that, you know, finding binomial coefficient, which is again a DP problem. This is also a DP problem, but I didn't come from that perspective. All right. So if you know any other way of solving that, any simpler way, or if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Um, otherwise, please you know, like the video and you know subscribe to the channel.